Welcome back to our series on the cell-based model of hemostasis. This is the final video where we will describe termination in order to understand how this powerful cell-based thrombin-generating machinery is ultimately stopped. And also what pharmacologic agents we can use um, to aid in stopping of thrombus formation. We begin where we left off. Tenase and prothrombinase are active on the platelet surface, generating large amounts of thrombin, which is powering the production of a fibrin platelet mesh at the site of vascular injury. Clots, however, are formed to be temporary, so within this mesh, the precursors to clot breakdown have been trapped during the process of formation. Specifically, in termination, the enzyme plasminogen comes in contact with TPA, or tissue plasminogen activator, to form the enzyme plasmin. Plasmin then interacts with fibrin, degrading it into what we call fibrin breakdown products. or fibrin degradation products. Clot formation, in addition to being able to break down, remains localized because the surfaces of intact vascular endothelium express an enzyme called thrombomodulin. And when thrombin comes in contact with thrombomodulin, it creates a complex which not only inactivates the thrombin, but also activates the enzyme called protein C, creating what we call activated protein C, which is a potent inhibitor of factor V. So activated protein C inhibits factor V. When factor V is inhibited, we'll remember from previous videos that 10A that is freely circulating in the vasculature is not very stable. Not only is it inhibited by enzymes such as tissue factor pathway inhibitor, but also inhibited by an enzyme called antithrombin. And I like to draw antithrombin, also known as AT, um, as a vice, because essentially what antithrombin does is it traps molecules of, of activated factor 10 and inactivates them into, into inert, unactive factor 10. Shutting down the process of thrombin formation by disassembling this machinery ultimately shifts the balance of un, ongoing endogenous clot formation formation involves creating this fibrin platelet mesh across the vasculature. But in the setting of acute coronary syndromes, we wish to further um, tip the balance um, to thrombolysis in order to restore coronary perfusion. So most often when a patient arrives in our emergency room with chest pain, we look to slow um, the formation of this clot um, by administration of agents that potentiate the action of antithrombin. And these, action, these agents are known as unfractionated heparin, low molecular weight heparin, and also fondaparinux. Now these agents essentially potentiate the inactivation of factor 10 by a thousand fold thus affecting the eff efficacy of the production of thrombin. Ultimately, in a patient who is having an ST elevation MI, thrombus has formation has extended such that this coronary artery vessel is 100% occluded by the fibrin platelet mesh. So the exogenous administration of TPA can be given 
to further potentiate the activation of plasminogen to, fiber, to, to plasmin so you can produce fibrin degradation products. With this understanding of the cell-based model of hemostasis, you can now understand how multiple drug classes, anticoagulants, thrombolytics, as well as antiplatelet agents, are important um, to the treatment of a patient with acute coronary syndromes, but also how bleeding risk can be affected by these potent antiplatelet and anticoagulants by shutting down not only pathologic clot formation, but also slowing necessary thrombus formation in response to injury. I look forward to answering your questions in class. Thanks so much.